More on this now with Dr. Elizabeth Holtkrantz, who is a professor at the Clinical and Experimental Medicine Department at Linkoping University. She's treated over 50 children with resignation syndrome and joins us from Uppsala in Sweden. Welcome to the program and thank you so much for joining us, Doctor. Firstly, you've worked extensively with patients and their families over this seemingly mysterious syndrome. Can you explain to us what have you found and describe to us uh, the patients that you've met? Oh, the condition is uh, some kind of dissociation between, a separation between body and soul. And uh, this occurs for the children when they uh, have no more hope, more or less. And, uh, and uh, uh, all of these children, they are all refugee children. They, they have experienced some kind of specific trauma in their homeland. Most of, uh, two thirds of these children uh, are, um, are uh, from minorities in their homelands. Uyghurs or Romas or Yelsidis who have been persecuted in the homeland. But this specific child has experienced a specific trauma in the homeland. In a few cases, uh, the, that specific trauma has occurred in Sweden, but most often it has occurred in the homeland. And it has also often been the, the reason for the family to leave the homeland. So the child is traumatized already when uh, he or she comes to Sweden. And I will object to what you said earlier. Uh, we have about the same, more or less exactly the same number of boys and girls in this con uh, with this disease. And um, uh, the specific trauma is uh, something which has happened uh, with, with a very close family member. Usually they have seen the father killed or uh, almost killed, and they, or they have been witnessing and forced to witness when the mother has been raped. And uh, that's, uh, that's the, the background to the whole thing. When they come to Sweden, they are usually very well taken, taken care of when they come, and the kids uh, recover and they feel safe in Sweden. But then when they have applied for, for asylum and they don't get asylum, then uh, uh, they, they, they mostly go back both in a post-traumatic um, stress syndrome and or uh, a deeper and deeper um, depression. So when they finally come to the situation when some triggering things happen in Sweden, and that triggering can be um, that the child, who often is very good in Sweden at that time, uh, he or she has to read the negative decision for, and translate to the parents uh, when, when they... Um, uh, when they have got a letter from the migration board. And, uh, but, but more common it is that they are visiting, together with their siblings, they're visiting the, the uh, migration agency, and there they get to know that they are not allowed to stay any longer. And then uh, not all the, sh the siblings uh, get resignation syndrome. No. It's just the child who has uh, been who has had that uh, trauma from the homeland no, who from, gets into it. Sorry to interrupt, uh, Doctor, but from what we know so far, those with resignation syndrome experience a, a slow social withdrawal, which can manifest in uh, the children. Uh, they either stop talking or uh, stop engaging in normal childlike activities such as school or playing, and no, in no, some cases... Oh they even stop opening their eyes. How is this currently being treated? How, how do you treat uh, the patients that you've seen with no, this syndrome? I, I see the patient when they already are in the deepest condition. And that means that they are laying in the bed with closed eyes. They cannot move, they don't speak, and they have to be taken care of through, uh, and, and fed through a nasogastric tube through their nose. So those are the children I am talking about, and uh, and uh, uh, they have already passed the stage um, the stage when they have been depressed and so and had uh, and have symptoms of 
post-traumatic stress syndrome. Um, I see the siblings are maybe taken care of. <laughs> they are taken care of uh, by the child psychiatrists in, in all different ways. The siblings who are not as damaged as these children are. But these children, they are treated at home. They lay at home. And as you can see on the movie uh, here, uh, on the same screen here, you can see that the parents are trying to do everything to uh, get that, that child back to life. And that means that they try to, they feed them, they, they give them sensory stimulation, and they give them physical exercise, no, not really, but physical self therapy, mm. uh, so they don't stiffen up and so on. But the thing is that uh, to be healthy, to come back, you have to have security. And as long as the child don't have security in the family, they, then they don't wake up. So we have seen before 2016, most of these children got a permanent residency ship uh, on their applications at the end. They had, they had usually got several denials first, but then at the end they got a permanent decision to stay. And all these children, and I have seen 34 of them, they have uh, woken up. It, 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 it takes a long time. It takes more than a year before they are back in normal uh, in all normal things, but but they they have all uh, before 2016 come back. But 2016 we got a new temporary law. It said uh, which did not allow these children to get permanent uh, uh, residency ship. And since then uh, we have had a much more troublesome situation because uh, even if they have got temporary uh, residency ship for 13 months. Not okay. all of them wake up during that time either. So wow. we have had girl, uh, children laying for years now, for many years, uh, and uh, uh, after 2016. Okay, doctor. But, uh, yeah. uh, I'm afraid uh, we will have to leave it there, but it really does sound like a distressing syndrome. But uh, we wish you all the best with your research and your dealings <laughs> with these patients. Dr. Elizabeth Hultzkrank, thank you so much for joining us from Sweden. Thank, thank you very much. <laughs>